All right, so I put Bernie the side of Newhouse. I figured why not just cover a little bit about what we did inside of Photoshop because I think there's a whole bunch of stuff that's really cool here that you can use. Let's go ahead and go into the Bernie. This is the Bernie that I provided in the link for the download. I'm just going to use the Move tool, drag him out of here, click over here, bring it back into the center, let it go, and now we're done. Now, once we have that there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a command space bar to zoom in, and you'll notice that there's some portions of this that are not perfectly done. All right, see some stuff there, some stuff there. This is where I like using a Wacom tablet, right? Because I think that it's really good about getting very specific. Now, I can do this a couple of different ways. Obviously, I can easiest way for me to do this is to just use the eraser and then erase out. But I don't never really know whether or not I'm going to do too much. So instead, I would just rather grab this, make a layer mask out of this, click on the layer mask, and now switch to a brush with a color of black and then jump inside of here and just start using a small brush. Now what I'm doing here is I'm holding down the control key, the actual control key on a Mac and the option key and I'm dragging left and right and that controls the size. Up and down controls the hardness. Make it a little harder, make it a little smaller and then I'm just gonna start getting rid of this. And this is where the Wacom tablet helps. All right. And you just go in and scrub that out and just make some happy little clouds. I always get upset because when I'm talking into the mic in situations like this, when I'm working, I feel like I'm a, it sounds like an NPR broadcast. Like I'm sitting there going, you're listening to all Photoshop considered on national public radio. But I want to get this done. So now. I have that done. I can zoom out here, zoom back in. I can cheat for the other ones. Watch this. I'm going to use the W to get into the magic wand tool up at the top. I can click on this one area here, selects all of it, and I want to fill it with the foreground. Keyboard shortcut for filling with a foreground color, which happens to be black. I am on the mask. Option delete. Done. Oh no, I. Oh, look at this. I changed my canvas, right? So. I rotated it. Show you another quick keyboard shortcut. See the rotate view tool right here? There's your rotate view. Double click it. Boop. And now it does it. It fixes it. Now hit the W, come over here, grab that, option delete to fill that. Then delete, I mean command D, use my brush, make the brush bigger, come back over here, get rid of that, get rid of that. Get rid of that and get rid of that. Right. Obviously, you can make it a lot better. The Wacom tablet is definitely helping. Look, I cut into the shoe. Well, what I would do here is I would just hit the letter X to swap my foreground and background. Now it's at white and then paint it back in. That's why I don't erase. Now, zoom out. There's Bernie. Not bad. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to take Bernie, I'm going to transform him, Command T, and drag from a corner, holding down the Option key so that I can just drag it from the center and put it right there. Now, having that done, what I want to do here is I want to do that drop shadow effect. That is actually part of a layer style. And layer styles, if you double click right here to the right of the word layer one, brings up a whole bunch of different layer styles. So pre-canned effects that you can modify and control for an object. So in this case, let's say for example, if I go to my stroke, right, it, it does a stroke around the contents of the layer and the stroke right now, if you click on it, is set to outside white, right? And click on that, make it red, make it bigger or smaller, right? Not necessarily what we want. You can make Bernie glow, right? Come over here, outer glow. That outer glow, click on it. Let's give them this neon green glow. Or look, even picking a color, you can pick a color from right out here. Even though you have the color picker open and this open, you could still pick colors from these areas. So you have majestic Bernie. Now, that's not what we want either. But what I do want is this drop shadow. And drop shadow is kind of cool because drop shadow has a distance, right? Where you put it. It has a spread, how congested or fanned out it is, the overall size, right, tight, 
or loose, and then the opacity, how hard or soft, or how translucent that shadow is. But here's what's something that's cool. Inside of the layer style, you could always just leave this open and you can actually position where you want Bernie to be. So I can grab that shadow and move that shadow around and get it exactly where I would want it without having to come up into those dialog boxes. Oh, that's pretty good. And click OK. Now that I have that right here, let's take it a step further because I need to be able to transform that shadow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our layer menu here. I'm going to go to layer style. And then from here, all the way down here at the bottom, there's a create layer section. Click on that. And what that's going to do is it's going to take the effect and break it out of the layer style. Notice that before it was here under the effects. And if you double click on it, you can go back into the layer style. By hitting create layer, it breaks it apart and just turns it into something that sits directly underneath it. Now I can do a command T for transforming and I can make this bigger or smaller by itself. But more importantly, using the free transform, you can also right click on the center of it and switch modes. So for example, I can use perspective. Drag that, change the perspective so that it looks like it's receding. I can right click again, I can go to skew. Right click on the center again, go to free transform, and I can rotate. Right click again, and I can warp. And with warping, you can move it as individual points, right? Just grab that, move that like that. And now, obviously, I'm not going to try to make it too realistic. I just wanted to show you how to do it. But once we have that set, not bad. Right? Now I can take that layer effect, put it into a layer mask. Again, come back over here, hit the letter X, hit the letter B. That's going to give me my black. I'm going to take my flow, make sure my flow is low right here. And then on that brush with that mask, I'm just going to slightly, ever so slightly, just paint out some of that stuff just to kind of give it a little bit of variance. Right. And then what I would do probably from here is I would just recede this even further using perspective. And put it kind of a little bit more behind him. Right. I'm just really looking for a moment where somebody could be like, what the? Right? How are they doing that? Right. So that would be one way for us to be able to do that. Now, what I want to take a look at here, though, is this. This, I think, is pretty cool. See that sign? I want to get rid of that sign. Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom in here. And what I'll do is I'm going to use my lasso tool. And this is, again, where the Wacom tablet works, right? Because now with the lasso tool, on a Wacom tablet, you just really get in to those areas. Come in here, move around, get right into that area. Got it. Shift delete doesn't edit fill. Use content aware. Boom. Done. Command zero. Command D for deselect. And being able to work precisely with the tablet has helped out a ton. I'm going to move this out of the way here, and our Bernie guy's looking great.